This is a 40 watt diode laser and surprisingly enough it can engrave and mark stainless steel. But far more interestingly, by varying the power of the laser I'm able to very precisely control the heat of the surface of the steel underneath the laser beam, allowing for the production of some really beautiful colours. Unlike pigments or dyes, these colours are never going to fade or be damaged by ultraviolet light from the sun since they're a physical interaction of light with the surface. This process is very different to traditional engraving which involves very precisely removing material. Instead, when you heat the stainless it will react with oxygen in the air to create a layer of chromium oxide, and more heat causes a thicker layer to form. The varying thickness of this oxide layer alters the way that light interacts with the surface, leading to the appearance of different colours through a phenomenon known as thin film interference. This same effect shows up a lot in nature and it's why things like oil slicks on water, soap bubbles and peacock feathers have really bright rainbow colours. And you can also see this exact same effect in stainless steel welds. The CNC laser's power and accuracy allows for really precise control of this effect, which I've used to create some really unique looking detailed colour markings on some large sheets of stainless steel. I've had loads of fun experimenting with this effect and with this laser cutter over the last few weeks, and this video goes over what went well and some of the challenges of making these cool engravings in stainless. So first, let's talk about the laser that I'm using. This laser is the Creality Falcon 2, which was sent to me by Creality for this video. Traditionally, diode lasers are quite limited in power, like this 2.5 watt diode laser on my Carvera CNC machine. This low power limits their use to light duty etching on wood. However, recently manufacturers have begun stacking multiple low power diodes together in an array and collimating the beams, allowing the final output of this diode to achieve a scary 40 watts of optical power in the beam. These new, more powerful diode lasers aim to be able to compete with the far more complicated and expensive CO2 lasers. In reality, I've found that in terms of cutting capability, they're still not quite as good, but they are more than capable of doing some really good engraving at fairly high speeds. I'll cover some more details and go over the pros and cons of this specific model of laser in a bit more detail at the end of the video. But for now, let's focus on some of the stainless steel engraving tests. The thickness of the oxide layer and consequently the resulting colour is affected by the speed and power of the laser. I'm running the laser using Lightburn which allows you to very easily create speed and power grids and fine tune the settings to get specific colours that you want for your engraving. The Creality laser has a precise setting which only uses half of the laser diodes but has a more precise beam with a thinner kerf. This limits the power to 20 watts but also gives you more detail and that's what I'm going to be using on for all of the colour engraving. It took a few test grids to home in on a range of parameters that would give nice colours. After a bit of experimentation I managed to get some quite nice blues, some sort of oranges and some straw yellows. I saved the settings of the colours that I liked and then tested them all next to each other in order of darkness. These looked alright but they're only in little test squares so I wanted to create an actual design that I can use them in to test them out. I remember that when I was younger I used to do a lot of these geometric type drawings. They were quite fun to do, just drawing lots of lines together is quite relaxing. So I thought I'd try and reuse some of these designs but on the laser. So I went over to Illustrator to recreate these designs but you could do it in any vector drawing program. It was quite easy to recreate these as well because you can just fix lines to the grid and obviously undo any mistakes a lot more easily than with a pen. I wanted to add my gradient of colours that I just tested into this design and the way that you can do that is by applying different colours in the vector file and then assigning those different colours to different layers in Lightburn. So I had to go around and individually select all of the different squares that I wanted to be different colours in this design. Once I imported the vector file into Lightburn, I could then apply the correct speed and power settings to each of the respective areas where I want them to make that area of the design the right colour. I also had the actual geometric lines that make up the structure at 100% power and the laser's doing those last to fill them in as black. It took two little test pieces for me to check that the laser settings were actually in the right order and that the gradient was looking nice. It's important to thoroughly degrease and clean the surface of the steel before engraving because that will affect how it reacts with the oxygen and the resulting colour produced. It's very easy to get handprints and dirty fingerprints that will be lasered into the final design and it looks absolutely terrible. You can see that I'm using an MDF wasteboard with some threaded holes to clamp the stainless steel plate down to an aluminium backing plate. This is because the heat from the laser can actually cause significant warpage in the thin sheet steel. Later on in this video, this becomes a lot more of an issue. 
This design went ahead without any problems and you can see the laser spends the majority of the time just scanning in the colours and the actual final outline is very quick. I'm really pleased with how clean the final result looks, the black lines are very crisp against the bright stainless steel. But I don't think my choice of colours for the gradient was very good, it's not a very clean transition and there's quite a lot of steps in it. I wanted to have a much cleaner gradient but selecting loads and loads of different colours to get a very fine gradient would be very very time consuming. Instead, I used the gradient tool in Illustrator to get a nice transition from white to black and put a good gradient on the shape. I import that gradient as a PNG into Lightburn and the lines are imported as a vector, as normal. I wanted Lightburn to adjust the power of the laser depending on the darkness of the bit of the image that it's scanning. By default, Lightburn scans images with a dithering pattern, which can look really nice if you're just trying to get black and white. But to actually adjust the power of the laser with the darkness of the image, you need to set it to grayscale mode. Now when you preview the G-code, you can see that the laser is more powerful on the darker bits of the image. This time the file takes a lot less time to run as well, since it's able to do the entire colour gradient just in a single pass, instead of having to go back for each colour. I think initially the colours look quite nice, but you can see even despite the clamping that I've done, the thin 0.7mm stainless steel has warped fairly significantly. Just flipping between before and after I'd done the final lines, you can see a big difference in the surface of the sheet metal. That's because so much heat is getting dumped straight into the surface from the laser. Despite the warpage, the main aim to experiment with the gradient fill came out pretty well. I quite like the colours, although they haven't come out quite as vibrant as I would have liked. At this point I just happened to be taking some macro photos of the surface and I realised that the lines were all kind of striped in the direction that they were being filled. This puzzled me at first, but then I remembered the fact that I was using the precise beam on the laser, which actually only has a laser beam width of 0.05mm, but I was only using a standard line interval of 0.1mm in Lightburn. This was actually leaving too big of a gap between the layers and making the colours not that vibrant, while also leaving this kind of horizontal banding, which looks quite ugly. Before I realised that this is what was causing the problem, I also ran a couple of experiments to try and get good colours using a picture of a Darth Vader helmet. The actual image and design lasered quite nicely, I think that the subtle oxidisation colours along with the black contrast of the helmet could look really nice if I nailed the settings, but I didn't get them quite right. I wasn't very happy with the colours and obviously I still had the same issue with the line spacing. So before wasting any more time and expensive stainless steel sheets, I decided to run some smaller gradient tests. I had two aims here, I wanted to firstly experiment with getting some really nice colours and I also wanted to see how fast I could run the laser while still getting good colours to reduce the runtime. I ended up running quite a few different gradient tests, first at different speeds from 0 to 100% power and then narrowing down the power range between 30 and 100% power so that I could stretch out the actual colour band. These tests all came out really well and I think that they produced some really nice looking colours. These are going to be really useful for narrowing down on a certain range of colours that I want to put in any of my images. You can also see from the close-up macro photos that the 0.05mm line spacing hasn't left any gaps in the different lines, it leads to much more vivid colours and none of that horizontal banding. It was also interesting to see that the same colours appear at different percentages of power depending on the speed of the laser. This makes sense because as the laser starts moving faster, you need to use more power from the laser to heat up the surface of the steel to the same temperature and achieve the same colour. To reduce the amount of time it takes to run each file, you can then speed up the laser but run it at a higher power and get the same colour output. I managed to get the laser up to 100mm a second and then I was still getting the full colour range going from 30% power to 100% power. But if I'm doing a design that needs some really dark black in the gradient, then I need to run it as slow as 30mm a second still. So now that I've figured out the settings for some nice gradients, I wanted to use them in an actual design. These gradient tests that I was creating really reminded me of colour bars that you would get on a graph. They show up all the time in engineering when you're trying to visualise some kind of complicated data. And when you're plotting that kind of data, you normally use a programming language like Python or MATLAB to create the graph. One of my friends just started working for MATLAB and it was his birthday coming up so I decided to test out the gradient for a design of their logo next to his name on a piece of scrap stainless steel. All of the metal that I've been using up until now has been 0.7mm thick to try and save on the cost, but this piece is 3mm thick and notice how it doesn't warp at all while I'm using the laser on it. It is a pretty random thing to make but I was really pleased with the way that the design and the colours came out on this one. I thought that the range of colours was really nice and the actual engraving itself was very crisp. 
I imagine that this type of engraving would be really cool for printing out FEA results on big sheets of stainless steel if you had some cool results that you wanted to make into a poster. So now I wanted to create some designs that I could print off a little bit larger that are less engineering based and just more aesthetic and look nice so I can hang them up on my wall. I've used mountains quite a lot for random designs on my CNC machines to test them out so I figured that this gradient effect would also look really nice for contour plots of mountains. I found a nice website that lets you download STL files from terrain data. I just zoomed in on a nice mountainous looking piece of the Swiss Alps which wasn't very hard to find and downloaded a file for it. I then created a Python script which plots two different graphs from the STL file. I'm initially just testing on a small area of the bit that I downloaded. The first piece of code imports the STL file and plots a grayscale height map of the mountain and exports it as a PNG image. I also wanted some contour lines on there so I made another script to plot the contour lines and I can adjust the number of contour lines and the smoothing of the lines. These lines are exported as an SVG which allows me to take them into Illustrator and clean them up a little bit. And this is what it looks like when the two plots are overlaid on top of each other in Lightburn. The grayscale image is going to give me the gradient which gives me the colour in the image and the vector contour plots are going to be another path that the laser can follow to create the contour lines. I ran two smaller tests to see if the contours were going to look good and if the colour range was nice and I liked the results so I moved on to making a bigger one. This is a more detailed design using the full section that I downloaded earlier. Because the contour lines are exported as a vector, the laser is actually able to follow them exactly instead of having to raster scan the image like it would have to do with a PNG or a JPEG file. So far out of all of the tests I think that this one is the best, but you can still see that warping is becoming a bit of an issue at this size. I was finally ready to commit to using a full sheet of stainless steel. Each of these sheets is 300mm by 300mm and they cost me about £5 each, so I didn't want to just keep wasting them on full scale tests. Once the designs get this big, the process is quite slow, and this entire design took the laser 6 hours to run. Unfortunately, just as I was filling in the contour lines, the left hand side of the sheet managed to warp up and crush into the laser head. This caused no damage to the laser, but it lost track of its position and just started burning random lines into the pattern, completely ruining the design and this sheet of steel. So it was clear that I needed to improve the clamping method to stop the sheet from warping as I was engraving it. I laser cut some 6mm plywood into the shape of a frame with the right hole spacing for my bed. I could have actually done this on the Creality laser, but the working area wasn't quite big enough for this, so I did it on a laser cutter at university that I've got free access to. The 6mm plywood with the furniture bolts leaves just enough clearance for the laser so that nothing collides. This time the cut ran smoothly up until the point where it was doing the contour lines again. At this point the metal was still able to actually warp and bend the plywood clamp that I'd made, so it's clear that I need to remanufacture this from either aluminium or steel. Despite the deflection of the clamp, the laser still managed to finish the design. And you can see how badly warped the sheet is as I remove it from the clamp. This being the largest design that I've done, with loads and loads of lines resulting in a lot of heat being put into the sheet steel, there's a significant amount of warpage. But if you ignore the warpage in the sheet steel for a minute, I think that the results are absolutely stunning. The entire sheet has a really nice shimmer to it as you move the light around or as you view it from different angles. From some angles the contour lines are black and from some angles they shine really reflectively silver. I also think that the colours on this one look great. There's a really nice range from a nice dark blue all the way through purple and then up to the bright shiny steel. So overall this design was a massive success, but I wanted to see if I could try and flatten out the sheet and get rid of some of the warpage. I tried it first by cutting off the corners and bending the border bits of metal backwards. I figured that if all four sides had four straight bends they would act kind of like creases and stop the sheet from being able to bend in any other direction. While this did help to flatten out the sheet a little bit, it's still kind of got this concave curve to it that's too severe for me to be able to hang out on a wall. So I think that once the sheet becomes this warped, it's probably going to be really hard to get the warp out of it. So I've either got to figure out a way to clamp it down properly, and perhaps that will stop it from warping as much, or laser onto some thicker sheet material, but that's going to be more expensive. Or another alternative is maybe I could do all of the lasering in two or three passes. It would take absolutely ages, but perhaps that would lead to less warpage. I need to do more experiments in the future. Once I figure out a good clamping method, I've got another design that I'd quite like to try as well. I wrote a Python script that will save a vector of loads of different lines that randomly follow a Perlin noise field. 
I did a small test of this on a small area and I think that doing a full scale sheet with like 20,000 lines would look really cool as the layers all start to overlap each other and lead to really dark areas in the engraving. But unfortunately this video is already long enough and I'm going to have to save that for the future. So a little bit more information on the pros and cons of this Creality diode laser. I quite like the size of the laser, it's nice and small, um, you can just pick it up and put it down on a flat surface and you can engrave directly onto that surface if you want to. This small form factor allows me to put it onto a drawer that I've got sliding out from underneath my CNC router. And that way once I've got it all tucked away underneath the machine in the enclosure it's fairly safe to use. The enclosure isn't fantastic, it's more of a zip up tent instead of a proper solid enclosure that can be found on more expensive lasers and you also can't access the emergency stop button when the enclosure is zipped up. But it does do a good job at keeping the laser light and fumes in, which makes the machine much more comfortable to use for longer carves. That being said, I'd be nowhere near as comfortable using the laser without the enclosure. I'm not a massive fan of these open gantry laser designs. Literally one bad reflection for a nanosecond into your eye could leave a permanent blind spot, which is really worrying. And I think in a lot of the marketing material and other YouTube videos that I've seen, this point hasn't really been highlighted very much. They don't even really recommend wearing safety glasses a lot of the time. Also, the enclosure is absolutely necessary if you want to do anything to do with wood and actually extract the fumes instead of them just blowing up into your room. It comes with a 5 volt PC fan and a duct so that you can blow the fumes out the window. But I found that the fan was really underpowered and everything just filled up with smoke, so I upgraded it to a 12 volt inline duct fan that I bought on the internet. This fan's quite loud, but it does a really good job of extracting all of the smoke. It literally fires it out the window, and when I'm cutting, I can't even smell smoke. In terms of cutting capabilities, this machine can certainly cut materials quite easily. 40 watts is quite a lot of power and easily enough to cut 10mm plywood and 10mm MDF but I don't think that it cuts as cleanly or as quickly as a CO2 laser, at least from my experiments. But the engraving from this machine is absolutely fantastic. I've also done some detailed engravings in wood and the amount of detail is really stunning. And that comes down to the 0.05 millimeter precise laser beam. So thank you very much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and watching some of these laser experiments. This laser is going to be a really great addition to my machines and it opens up a lot of opportunities that I couldn't do before. If you're interested in purchasing one of these lasers then there's a link in the description down below. This video has potentially been quite different to my usual content with lots of different experiments instead of just one large project so let me know in the comments down below whether you enjoyed this type of video or not. And if you didn't enjoy it I still think that you're really going to enjoy my next video which is more in my usual style. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.